Test Drive with Graham Fletcher. A couple of weeks ago, I was challenged to find a truly affordable sports car. This week on Test Drive, we look at one that I think fits the bill very nicely, the 1990 Isuzu Impulse. Now, GM's acquisition of Lotus will certainly help this car in the pylon testing because Lotus actually designed the suspension in this car. On paper, the Isuzu's 1.6-litre 16-valve twin-cam engine produces 130 horsepower. On the road, the car does not perform with the zeal one would expect from an engine that produces this sort of power. In fact, below 3,000 RPM, the engine felt decidedly flat. Now, in fairness, though, this symptom is endemic of small multi-valve engines because they lack the low-end torque required to offer any real sort of pickup. This situation was compounded by the automatic transmission our test car was equipped with. Generally speaking, automatics tend to absorb more power than standard transmissions during the transfer of power from engine to the drive wheels. The net result was rather lethargic performance off the line, but once moving and above that 3000 RPM mark, the performance improves considerably. In the acceleration test, the best time we managed was just under 10 seconds to the 100k mark. The Lotus design suspension system is teamed with a good set of low profile tires. The result is an extremely agile vehicle with remarkably good handling characteristics. During the pylon test, the Isuzu bobbed and weaved its way through the course as well as any vehicle I've tested, including the mid-engined MR2. The downside is that the car becomes a little temperamental on broken pavement, transferring a lot of the harshness onto the occupants. The Impulse features a four-wheel disc brake setup. This system requires an unusually high amount of pedal pressure to find the threshold. This makes the system a little difficult to modulate at first, but once you become accustomed to this quirk, they function very well. We recorded stops that average 116 feet from 80 kilometers an hour. Not great, but adequate. The automatic transmission in our test vehicle featured normal, economy, and manual modes. The normal and economy modes function as usual. The manual position allows the driver to select their own shift points. This does help performance, but means you must sacrifice the automatic kickdown. This is more than inconvenient under normal driving conditions. My suggestion, leave it set in the normal mode. That way you get the best of both worlds. The instrument cluster is clean, clear, and laid out in logical fashion, meaning all information is easily retrieved. The primary driving controls all fall readily to hand. However, the secondary controls, like the radio, the ventilation, and power window controls, have been placed out of arm's length, making them a little awkward to reach. This and the fact that they sit below your usual line of sight makes them awkward to operate and forces you to take your eyes off the road occasionally. The impulse is typical of all 2 plus 2s in the fact that the rear seat room is cramped and better suited to providing extra storage space rather than seating capacity. With the seat folded down, the available trunk space is more than generous for a car of the impulse's dimensions. The front seats offer superb comfort, providing ample lateral support and generally add to the overall driving ambience offered by the car. It's time for my pet peeve, and on the impulse, it's to do with the door handles. Firstly, the location and the way they operate make it awkward to get in and out of the car. Secondly, the lift over height to get anything in and out of the trunk is high to say the least. Anyway, now to the scoreboard for the ratings of the 1990 Isuzu Impulse. Despite the relatively lazy 10 seconds required to reach the 100k mark, the engine is lively enough to make the impulse seem quicker than it actually is. If only the low end torque were the equal of the horsepower, this car would be able to back up its attractive and aggressive appearance. Loaders have done a bang up job with the suspension as far as handling is concerned. It is tight, taut and capable of giving its best, even in adversity. I only wish it were a tit softer. Despite the high brake pedal pressure required to stop the impulse, we still managed some predictable and controlled stops that averaged 116 feet from 80k. There was some wind noise at higher speeds, but all in all, the overall noise level is more than acceptable for this type of car. The impulse's lack of low end punch was more than compensated for in the fuel economy. We averaged a superb 32 miles per gallon or 8.8 .8 liters per 100 kilometers. When Colin Chapman founded Lotus, his main aim was to take ordinary cars and transform them into true performance cars. The legacy he left certainly benefits this car. Let's hope that General Motors takes full advantage of their access to Lotus and all the good things the name brings to cars that are graced with this prestigious emblem. 
Despite my criticisms, I did enjoy driving the Impulse, and it is worthy of a look if you are in the market for a sports car.